Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to install SQL Server 2016 Enterprise. In this particular video, we'll be concentrating on installation of SQL Server Engine Services. And the feature includes in Engine Services our SQL Server Replication, our Services, Full Text Search, Data Quality Services, and the new feature Polybase Query Services for External Data. We'll be taking a look a little bit on prerequisite site. So let's go and take a look on prerequisite that requires for our installation to be completed successfully. So look here, SQL Server Engine Services, it requires Windows PowerShell 3.0 or higher, Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 redistributables, uh, .NET Framework 3.0 and 4.6. One thing I wanted to mention that these uh, three prerequisites, I call them common prerequisites, that, that actually means that uh, any uh, service that you are going to install in SQL Server 2016, these three prerequisites are must. So if you select SQL Server Replication, it doesn't change. All those three will work fine. And if you select our services, you have to install Microsoft MPI version 7. For data quality, you have to install MS um, Visual Studio 2010 Shell. Uh, for new feature Polybase Query Services for external data, you have to download from the Oracle side the Oracle SE Java Runtime Environment version 7, and I believe it is uh, update 51 or higher. Uh, and if you select to install integration services, you need MS Visual C++ 2015 redistributables and MS Visual Studio tools for application uh, for 2015. One change I would like to mention here that SQL Server Management Studio is not part of the uh, basic installation of SQL Server 2016. You have to download SQL Server 2016 Management Studio separate and install it. However, one thing I wanted to mention that if you install SQL Server Management Studio separate and ahead of SQL Server services uh, or any feature of SQL Server, most of these prerequisites will be taken care of by the installation of uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Let's get into the installation. Here is the server where I'm going to install SQL Server uh, Database Engine Services. And this is my media. All you need to do is right click on the setup and run as administrator. Uh, my landing page takes a little bit of time. That's why I already have it right here. You need to click on installation. If you decided to install SQL Server Management Studio, you need to click on this link, Install SQL Server Management Tools, and it'll take you to the download page and you will download and install it. We're going to click on uh, New SQL Server Standalone Installation or Add Features. Let's click on that. It's installing some set of files right now. Then it'll take us to the selection page what feature or services of SQL Server 2016 we want to select. Here's the uh, feature selection page. As we discussed uh, in the beginning of our video that this vi particular video is about uh, database engine services and the features below that. If you would like to know the prerequisites that's already installed on your server or not, um, you need to click on each feature right here and as you can see right here prerequisites for selected features I call these prerequisites common prerequisites this is required by each feature uh, every feature almost every feature and then some additional uh, prerequisites if you select more features click on our services full text data quality and as soon as I will click on polybase query Right here, you will see that it requires Oracle SE Java Runtime Environment, which I don't have it installed, but I have it downloaded. So uh, when I click Next, it's going to fail, um, and we click on Fail Status, and it'll give you the um, page or the link that you need to go and download that particular uh, uh, prerequisite. I'm also going to install some client, so data quality, uh, client tools connectivity, backward compatibility, client tool SDK, and that's about it. I would have clicked this, but I already have that installed. So click next. As you can see that um, 
Oracle GRE 7 update 51 uh, that was required for our Polybase installation that's failed so click on failed status and here's the link I was talking about that will take you to uh, download this particular um, prerequisite so I have it in already downloaded so I will go ahead and install that now and then we will rerun and see that if it passes that prerequisite requirement. All right, installation is completed, it's pretty quick. And let's rerun right here. As you can see, it's passed and now we're at the page where we need to select either wanted to install named instance SQL Server 2016 or default instance. Just to mention that uh, mostly companies are installing SQL Server uh, when it comes to availability group, uh, one SQL Server uh, per server, but if you have requirement to install multiple SQL Server on one server, then you need to install named instance so that um, you, you're just allowed one default instance per server. I'm going to install default instance, click on default, and this is your default instance MS SQL Server. Click Next. All right, this is a Polybase configuration. Polybase configuration can be scale out or it can be standalone. So the first option we have is that uh, you you choose this to just have Polybase standalone head node. This is the this this would be your head node. If you have multiple Polybase instances and you want to do the scale out, then you need to click on the second right here. And if you read right here, it says uh, Polybase scale out group. So if you need to create group of the servers that has Polybase instance enabled, then you need to click on the second one. I'm going to use the first option and click next. This is where um, the SQL Server agent services. If you leave that this way, this is gonna. These are the accounts that's gonna run these services. This is not a good practice. The best practice is that you will have SQL Server agent service account separate and a database engine uh, account separate because these accounts are very important in the later even the installation and later setup of the SQL Server different features so make sure that you have a separate account I do have one account that I can run agent and um, the SQL Server data engine service but um, make sure that you have it separate so I'll go ahead and browse that This is my service account that I want to run SQL Server agent with. You need to have the password if you select different than anti-service authority. I always um, uh, do the SQL Server agent startup automatic, but you can leave it um, manual and then you can change it in the services later on. Rest everything, I'm gonna leave it uh, just as it is. Uh, it's a good idea to disable your uh, browsing services, but if you have multiple SQL Server instances, you may have to enable this because this is what tells DNS that which SQL Server uh, the application is trying to connect and it'll route you to that particular SQL Server instance. Click Next. Server configuration, we are going to use mixed mode, uh, Windows authentication mode. If you install it, it will only take uh, the user's uh, Windows authentication that is created in Active Directory. Otherwise, you will not be able to. Uh, um, otherwise, you will not be able to create SQL Server account. If you notice right here, it says SQL Server authentication. You will not be able to use that with this first option. So as soon as you click on Mixed Mode, it asks you SA password. 
and make sure that you really save that password uh, some of the folks has forgotten this password they have to recover that I have another video that will cover that but uh, just to make sure that uh, you don't run into issues later just save this password up here um, adding user you can add the the current user also if you're part of sql server uh, dba team uh, you should add that team right now what if you will go uh, on vacation tomorrow and some configuration needs to be done on sql server then it'll be hard for that team to get into sql server unless they know the sa password data directory tab um, it is always a best practice to keep your database data files in a separate disk and log file separate disk if you have a backup disk you should configure it now it'll save you time a little later uh, click on temp db this is uh, where you will um, you can define right now in 2008 r2 or 2005 we use not to have this facility to, during the setup that how many files of temp db we wanted to create this also in to 2014 uh, used to be s uh, selected based on your uh, cpu but um, you can define right here how many uh, temp db files that you wanted to um, uh, uh, create uh, when this setup will complete but um, i believe it's uh, eight files maximum eight files but i'm not sure about that you can find it uh, on microsoft website that how many um, temp db files that you can create during the setup so i'm going to go ahead and create three not that this is the best practice but i'm telling you that um, you you might want to create eight based on your cpu power this is just a little machine for me so i'm going to create three temp db files click on file stream if you're um, dealing with images and all that you should enable um, file stream and videos and all that it's always a good idea to enable file stream that will help a SQL Server engine to decide um, to take advantage of uh, uh, file streaming and it will be good for performance reason click next and accept right here the integration of uh, our services click next and click install this installation is going to take some time I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video uh, once the installation is complete I'll be back if there are any issues during the installation I'll share that with you and also the resolution all right as you can see that all the uh, services and feature that we selected installed successfully no errors so let's go ahead and close this I haven't installed SQL Server Management Studio so I cannot uh, uh, launch SQL Server Management Studio here in this server and see if we can connect with the uh, uh, Tech Brothers SQL I do have it uh, on other servers so here's my SQL Server Management Studio 2016 and I'm gonna see that if I can connect to Tech Brothers SQL And see if everything is installed correctly as you can see that right here this wasn't the user that I installed with all right I used SA password to get into um, newly installed SQL Server as you can see everything looks good everything is online my next video is going to be installing SQL Server Management Studio on the same server and I'll see you then thank you for watching